Deepika, which is commentary by Nyaneshwar Maharaj on Bhagavad Gita, Asakta Buddhi Sarvatra Jitatma Vigatas Pruha Naishkarmya Siddhim Paramam Sanya Senadi Gachati. This is the verse that we are looking at. He whose intellect is unattached to all things, Asakta Buddhi, he who is self restrained, uh, Jitatmana. Jitat, uh, j- jitatma and then uh, and free from desires uh, vigata spruhaha attains through un- renunciation uh, sanyasena uh, uh, the highest perfection which is freedom from action and paramam uh, naishkarmya siddhi naishkarmya siddhi that which is uh, attainlessment attainment Ah, naish karmya. We only know to achieve something through effort. This is without effort, it is achieved. In other, in other words, it is already, uh, it is an achievementless achievement. Because it's already there. And what is that? That's you. <laughs> the, the self, the pure consciousness. Naish karmya siddhi is that. Siddhi is attainment. Par, uh, and Naish Karmiya is without activity. Uh, so we are looking at 970, 970 verse. And here we are looking when ignorance, which is the past cause of action, is destroyed, even the name of mundane existence becomes obliterated, and knower himself becomes that which is to be known. Knower becomes that which is to be known. What is ignorance? Ignorance for the wave is, I am a wave. And what is this wave? Wave is water as if identified with the form and now considering itself to be a limited wave. And when it comes in front of scriptures or it comes to the Guru Maharaj, he is told, you are the infinite one. So similarly, instead of wave, you put yourself, you are consciousness, you have identified with this form and now you are considering that you are this limited form which which took birth on a particular date, which will die on a particular uh, point of time in future. These These are my dimensions. How can consciousness, does water have any dimensions? No. Can pure consciousness have dimensions? No, it is infinite. So, when ignorance is cut off, ignorance is burnt away, here he says, when ignorance which is the root cause of action is destroyed. And what 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 is the effect, what is the child of ignorance we told last week? The child of ignorance is desire. What is the grandchild of ignorance? That means the the child of desire, karma, action. So ignorance is the grandmother. It is the root. So, where is this talking going on? Where is this listening going on? In ignorance. Where is this desire to liberate going on? In ignorance. 
where are efforts going on in ignorance where life as we know it going on it is going on in ignorance only it is the effect of ignorance ignorance is the cause desire and action are the effect and that is and we are addicted to action we are addicted to desires including that to satsang <laughs> so now what we are doing we are replacing the desire for the world of objects relations memories to uh, with desire for liberation how do we have desire for liberation uh, oh, i know i i want to be the infinite one but how to get there uh, then scriptures come into your life then teacher comes into your life to guide if you become available it becomes available the teacher becomes available the scriptures become available see they grace us yesterday also this topic came in kathopanishad the scriptures grace the one who is seeking the teacher graces the one who is seeking the god comes in dream gives him visions gives him the akashvani you know the the, the, the he hears sounds of in which direction to turn what to practice i have got even our louis अपनी क्लास में जो आती थी इन रिट्रीट शी कम्स लोइस शी हैज नेवर बीन टू इंडिया बट सत्य साई बाबा यूज टू गिव हर दर्शन एंड शी यूज टू सी हु इज दिस फेलो विद दिस ऑल करली हेयर एंड एवरीथिंग एंड आफ्टर फ्यू इयर्स शी सॉ द फोटोग्राफ वन डे दिस इज द फेलो हु कम्स एंड ट्रेवल्स मी एंड देन शी स्टार्टेड गोइंग देयर सिंगिंग भजन दिस दैट after many many 20 years of singing bhajans then she wanted to know more then she came to the classes and that to how another friend of hers who was also a sai baba devotee teresa and she went to put up her she in her house you see a big altar she prayed to baba baba please i want you are now, because towards the end of his life Satya Sai Baba used to talk about Brahman a lot, the reality. Less miracles, less uh, g- g- stories, more Brahman, the truth. So she said, "I also want to know Brahman. You have been talking about it, but how do I? I read the Bhagavad Gita, but I don't understand as you want, as I should be able to understand. I have the books of Upanishads, but I have taken class. She used to take classes." i have taken classes but i but i know that i am still not there please you guide what is going to happen how should i approach this how should i study whom should i study with or you are going to come and teach me or whatever she was she had that relationship with baba and then one day she was going and uh, she used to go to some yoga center in uh, uh, where there is this fitzroy and there she saw i was giving a talk on yoga yoga sutras uh, one retreat in vivekananda yoga center in fitzroy now it is closed down and she said are and then she came attended the retreat and she said swami ji do you take other classes i said yes i take gita class i take upanishad panchadashi and suddenly everything clicked and she ca- she continued attending for almost 17 years <laughs> 17 years and then she became instrumental in telling louis she started coming because she was seeking this is how it happens see this is how it happened in our life also to get where to naish karme siddhi to attain that which is already attained <laughs> to experience that which is already our natural state of abidance knowing that which is already known does the wave does not know or it imagines that it does not know and it thinks i have to do meditation i have to study scriptures i have to, to have the grace to realize that i am water any person outside will say what a foolish statement isn't it that's how teachers guru maharaj masters 
when we say i went to one teacher in girnar and one month i was with him he initiated me into kundalini yoga and uh, he says on the first day itself he called me into his room he says what do you want i said i want atma sakshatkar i want a direct experience of the self he says what are you ready to do for it i said whatever you say i am at your at your feet you you decide he says tomorrow morning 4:30 out there I said, okay so what did i want i wanted direct experience of the self why that thought came because i feel i am not having the direct experience of the self why am i not having direct experience of the self because i am identified with my mind and body the wave is also identified with mind with its form therefore that piece of water with that particular form is called a wave when it dissolves that identification the wave doesn't need to die all that needs to die is the identification with that form your body doesn't need to die this is what nachiketa is teaching in uh, kathopanishad he is in the he is face to face with death listen to yesterday's lecture beautiful he is face to face with death because only death is the greatest teacher it is uh, that principle of death is present all the time so we have to cut this identification the moment identific- identification is cut then the individual will no longer be there individual is there only as long as the identification is there if there is nothing to identify then individual is no longer individual he is the infinite what individual individual consciousness was accepting this form now there is no form to identify with it because it realizes or it abides in the infinite consciousness as the infinite consciousness so when we keep saying i i i i i all the time in communication in communication masters also speak i am hungry i want to go here i want to go there i want i want to, i am tired now does not mean that he has become egoistic that is at a relational level you will use that language but where is he abiding the mind is speaking in that manner but where is he is he considering himself to be the mind is he considering himself to be the body is he consider or is he abiding in the infinite self that he essentially that the essence is and that's what is told here naish karma siddhi attainless attainment experience less experience knowing less knowing that is our natural state all we have, all sadhana that we are doing as a result of coming to satsangs and chanting or japa or uh, pranayam or everything is only to rem- dissolve our identification if we can dissolve that identification like effortlessly when do you dissolve it effortlessly every night when you go to sleep you dissolve all your identification to the body also to your relations everything goes you don't make it go it goes away be so focused on you on the i who am i with that intensity with that coolness with that surrender with that a uh, uh, willingness to uh, dissolve into what you are seeking because all seeking is in the mind only just like you dissolve into sleep the mind dissolves into sleep it does not make efforts to give up the waking waking leaves the mind so you focus on the self let the world leave the mind and when there is nothing left to leave there you are this is what was told and then in the next verse it says if a person if a person dreams that he was drowning in deep waters in a river will he make an effort after waking up to save himself from drowning 
this is a very classic example which is taken in Upanishads, Panchadashi, here also Nyaneshwar Maharaj is taking it, taking and that is if we have a horrible dream or a very very wonderful, uh, absolutely ecstatic dream, if it is a horrible dream, the horrible event will wake, make you wake up. If it is an ecstatic dream, that ecstasy will make you make you wake up. You cannot remain in the dream. The moment you wake up, you are like, eh, it was a dream. You give it zero value. Does it mean that tomorrow dream will not come? It may come. Some other dream will come. But the moment you wake up, you realize, recognize the ephemeral nature, ephemeral changing nature, temporary nature of the dream. What is dream? That which is existing in its own absence. It is mithya. Mithya means it's illusory. And therefore, it has gone deep in, into us. And we say, eh. and within two seconds, you can't even remember all that which happened in the dream. Isn't it? But we have invested so much in the waking, we feel that way. But when we wake up from the waking, we will give equal value to the waking as we are giving the value to the dream. And many people are scared of this. <laughs> because we have invested so much in the waking. My husband, my wife, my children, my grandchildren, my memories, all these wonderful the things that have happened, all the, and not only wonderful things, but all the pains and all the efforts and all the challenges that you have overcome and you have come to with this juncture of your life. And now you tell me that it is zero. But the dreamer also was thinking the same way my life, my uh, challenges, my aspirations, my uh, 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 goals. Huh? But it had to wake up one day. Uh, not one day. It had to wake up eventually. The moment he woke up, immediately he gives zero value. Similarly, when, the, when we wake up from the waking dream, the process was told in the last two classes, and we wake up from the waking dream. And what was the process? Asakta buddhi, that intellect which is not attached. Jitatma, the senses and the mind are not attached, are within control. Vigata spruhaha, we are not desirous of anything in the world. It All these three steps lead to naishkarmya siddhi. Because this is the data which keeps you going round and round and round and round. What is that data? Attachment. <laughs> no control over senses. Every sense is taking you in different directions. Mind is leaking out of the senses into the world and getting attached. Vigata Spriha. So once you have stopped the mind from leaking into the through the senses into the world, then there is no desire for the world. Because the senses are in control. The mind is in control then it does not have anything to attach with. The I does not have any data to attach with. It is smart. It will say, I will get attached to nothing. Then it comes, you get sleep. But that is not our goal. So here he says, in the same way, when, uh, when the bad dream that I am ignorant, now I have attained knowledge, comes to an end, his notions of the knowing agent and the object of knowledge cease and he himself becomes all pervasive knowledge. He becomes, this is, what is our journey? If you watch from childhood till today, all you have been doing knowingly or unknowingly is expanding yourself. Some people take it literally, they keep expanding at body level. But whether they like it or not, hasn't their mind kept expanding? More memories, more information, more goals, more aspirations, more uh, projects, think. 
we finish one project of uh, driveway the next uh, garden comes then garden finish grass comes then grass finishes something or the other and we keep learning along the way how to do it this is at mind level but it needs to break free from the shackles of this body to experience expanded consciousness and you do it every day you go from waking to sleep sleep is completely expanded consciousness but it happens so quickly without your awareness that you don't uh, you you are not awake in sleep you are not able to experience that sleep that wake wakefully if you do it wakefully you are there okay is there any in, in, in intermediate go way yes all the seven lokas the cross the subtle the causal and within the subtle there are seven seven levels go from bhurbhuva suva tapa jana maha satyam all the way to the creator truth is beyond the creator but my point here is that from childhood till today our consciousness has been involuntarily expanding either because parents put us into the school or a natural inborn curiosity to know more and more and more and more isn't it but it becomes limited only up to what we see and at the sensory level we are not going beyond the sensory level for that for such people who are only at the sensory level the the the, the foundation of their thinking is what i see i believe to expand beyond the uh, norm beyond the sensory level gross sensory senses is what i believe i can achieve you have never and this is true you may say that i see stanton so stanton is there i see sofa so sofa is there i see laptop so laptop is there do you see the mind then why do you say i, I know i i i know i have a mind do you see life no you only see moving parts called body what proof do you have that there is consciousness inside have you seen it i can show you another pro, 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 body parts put together they will start working car works car also moves is there consciousness in it that monkey with the drum and uh, you know the music box you put the key and you, nothing and it going on <laughs> so what is but you even though you have not known consciousness you are what you are doing you are thinking the body is consciousness knowing fully well somewhere deep inside which you have not explored that consciousness is i i am the consciousness the life is consciousness body cannot be life body is that equipment through which life expresses senses are equip equipments or windows through which life expresses as seeing hearing touching feeling tasting mind is that equipment through which life expresses as thoughts emotions convictions etc so how can that through which life is expressing can be life itself <laughs> i am the life i don't say that uh, i am when i say whenever we make a statement don't we say i am seeing through eyes so which means you know you are not the eyes you know you are not the body you know you are not the mind but somewhere the, the error is error is that ignorance which keeps us in the loop of identification 
and that crystallizes our consciousness doesn't allow it to expand specific exercises of contemplation of focus of single pointedness of uh, convictions have to be introduced to remind you of yourself <laughs> and that is what is going on here in this particular verse ah uh, yeah in the same way when he had uh, when the bad dream that i am ignorant what was the bad dream i am ignorant where is it going on in the waking right now i am ignorant now i have attained knowledge and in the waking only you will come to know in the meditation you will come to know in the contemplation you will come to know that hey man yeah yeah i was ignorant but as i am studying or as the mind has become calm and I, I, I and it's not affecting me i have created distance between me and the mind the self and the mind i, I, I become immune to its drama that is called equanimity with that comes knowledge knowledge is not thought knowledge we are not talking about thought knowledge here we are talking about self which is of the nature of knowledge self meaning pure consciousness now i have attained knowledge comes to an end his notions of the knowing agent and the object of knowledge see sees so the knower and the known they sees what was the knower wanting to know as an ignorant he wanted to know the world as a seeker spiritual seeker he wanted to know the spirit he wanted to know the consciousness who i wants to know i which is of the nature of consciousness <laughs> it's like very simple example this i wants to see itself is it possible but will the knowledge take place yes at this very moment it is there but if we force the eye sight which is outwards and we want to keep wanting to look at our own eyes we don't have to go through that exercise but in yoga they will try that <laughs> huh? here here in the 970 Sixth verse, he says, "Mukha bhase si arisa parauta neliya viresha pahate pane vina zaisa pahata thake taise ne nane zegele te ne zanane hi nele mag nishkriya urle chin matra chi te tho swabhave dhananjaya." नाही कोणीची क्रिया म्हणवनी प्रवादूतया नैष्कर्म्यू ऐसा ते आपुले आपण पे असे ते ची होऊ निहार पे तरंगू का वायू लोपे समुद्रू जैसा तैसे न होणे निफजे ते नैष्कर्म्य सिद्धी जाणिजे सर्व सिद्धी त सहजे परमहेची हिजेज in the 976th ovi onwards when the mirror is set aside the reflection as well as the act of seeing in the mirror stop and the seer then remains alone so when ignorance ceases the act of knowing also ceases and only the inactive self remains behind inactive self self never acts or not acts self is as it is so so just as in the mirror when the mirror is taken away do you go away with the mirror when the mirror is removed from in front of you in which you are looking at your reflection and your activity when the mirror is removed do you cease to be or do you continue to be you continue to be what is the mirror the mind when the mirror has become <laughs> taken away means the mind has become quiet empty no activity there 
of thoughts do you cease to be no you are very much there you don't need a mirror in a in a at a physical level you don't need a mirror to know in spite of the mirror you know you are yes when mirror comes in front of me then i will probably ch- check my dadi check my hair uh, if the glass is right if the face is okay if the lipstick is no i don't put lipstick but if the lipstick is on and the mascara is on huh yeah. does it look like lipstick no <laughs> huh? so i can delve in that and some people delve in that and lose the original is that our case that we delve in the mirror are we all the time sitting in front of the mirror my god if i go away from the mirror i will not be anymore many people are like that young girls are like that hours they will be combing their hair gel this gel that are you like that no so for you to you it does not matter whether the mirror is there or not you continue to be similarly if the mirror of the mind is there or not understand you continue to be when the mirror is set aside the reflection as well as the act of seeing the reflection as well as the act of seeing in the mirror stop and the seer then remains alone so when ignorance ceases the act of knowing also ceases and only inactive self remains behind o arjuna as as the self by nature is not active this state is called actionlessness actionlessness nish uh, naish karmya naish karmya is actionlessness effortlessness then where is activity see we are doing uh, i don't know if you ever any of you are hearing uh, adhyatma ramayan adhyatma ramayan is spirit philosophical spiritual ramayan same story of Bhak- uh, uh, ram sita but the beginning chapter first chapter itself is talking about how the introduction is ram chandra ji shri ram says to sita sita see hanuman ji is sitting in front of us he is uh, so devoted you tell him my truth he tells sita to tell hanuman ji his truth and sita begins she smiles and she looks at hanuman she says you are very dear to me and she starts first sentence it says ram has not done anything in his life stupid people ignorant people think ram is born to dasharath that ram was uh, a child that ram went to you know to the ashram to study that ram killed ravana that ram was sent to uh, exile she says ram did not do anything like this what do you mean by ram did not do anything we know ram chandra ji went he was born because of the havan the fire sacrifice then the paisam ram is sachidanand swarup nitya shuddha buddha mukta swarup he is actionless he is desireless he is limitation free he is conditionless he does not fall into the purview of space time and objectivity but we see yeah what do you see is my creation <laughs> sita is saying sita says what you see as ram i have created that infinite in this limited form it is all my doing if he cried when i was abducted i made him cry if you feel ramchandra ji made the 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 inexcusable demand that i must go through the fire to prove my uh, 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 chastity i made him do it 
If you think Ram stood behind the tree and killed Bali, I made him do it. He did not do anything. He cannot do anything because he is all that there is. This is how she begins. Then the whole story is, is still going on. This is the self. Who is making the self appear as if he is acting? The mind. <laughs> See? Prakriti. So there, in that particular example, Ramachandra ji is the Parabrahma Paramatma, Sita ji is the Avyakta, unmanifest power, and Hanuman ji is the manifest power, the, the mind. That mind which is completely surrendered, devoted to the infinite, that is Hanuman. Our mind also must be like that. Sita is Yoga Maya there. Then he says that the self by nature is not active. There is no activity in nature, in the nature of the self. Activity is only in the mind. Activity is, and a technical way of putting it, activity is only possible in the not self. Activity is only possible where there is ignorance. Activity is only possible where there is self, S-E-L-F, capital, apostrophe, underline, italics, everything. Activity is possible in the not self. This state is called actionlessness, nashkarmya, nashkarmya, he who, so when you when the ignorance is destroyed by the root, at the root, then there is attainment, Siddhi. Siddhi is attainment, attainment of Naishkarmya. What is this? Actionlessness. To believe and see what we are doing. I am speaking, you are listening, this is all activity. Asha, now, oh, I think for last 10 years I am listening to this satsang, but I have still not abided in myself. I think what else can I do? This is the question that comes in our mind, no? When we are sitting quietly, in the, we are, uh, what should I do? Acha, chalo, let me do japa. You do japa for 10, 15 minutes, you are in, after, uh, after half an hour of japa, you are in meditation. The moment the meditation breaks, you come out of it. The first thought that, what should I do now? We are so caught up in doing. We are absolutely not comfortable with not doing. <laughs> that not doing, no, actionlessness is Naish Karmya. And who is the, what is this Naish Karmya? It is our essential nature. It is the self and understand, do not superimpose. You know what is superimpose? Paste. Do not superimpose activity onto the self. Just as Sita ji explained, Ram Chandra ji did not perform any action. All action that you see, I made him, I superimposed it on him. It is all my Leela. It is all my expansion. And in spite of doing, making him go through all this, he ever remains untouched by all activity. She says, I, my existence is because of him. I become active or inactive only because of him. I superimpose activity and non-activity because of him. He supports activity and no activity, but himself is actionless. Apply all, apply these principles on yourself. Self is actionless, but it supports all activity and absence of activity. Is it not true? Don't you as pure consciousness support non-activity, deep sleep? All of them, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 
80? I don't know. <laughs> if mom is hearing 80. Huh? For so many years we have supported every every day that non-activity less. And all activity, hyperactivity, dream, little bit slower activity, waking. So haven't we been supporting all of them? But which one do we consider our, ourselves to be? The sleeper, the dreamer or the waker? Or the one who is supporting all the three and not affected by the three? Not influenced by the three, not entangled by the three. This is Naish Karmaya. Come to know that you are that. But when uh, this state is called actionlessness, Naish Karmaya, until now we thought ourselves to be different from our essential nature. But when the breeze stops, the wave in the ocean also get dissolved in the sea. <laughs> Where do the waves go? If you want to go to a pond, throw one small stone into the waters, it will create a ripple. Wait for 2-3 minutes, there will be no ripple. Where have all the ripples gone? Where did they come from? Where did they exist? Where did they merge back into? Oh, they came from water, they stayed in water, they merged back in water. Then why did you call it a ripple? Why did you call it a ripple? So you also came from as if. So did anything come out of the water to become a ripple? Or it was water only? It was water only. This is the illusion. This is the creation-less creation. Creation is not true. Creation is existing in its own absence. Therefore, it is called creation-less creation. It's an illusion. It's a it's mithya. It's existing in its own absence. Oh my God! That means we are all existing in our own absence. Yes. What is the consequence of that? We are all one. Yes. We are not separate. No. Then why do we feel? Because you are you don't know yourself. That's why. Come to know yourself. You will be one with the air. There will be no distinctions for you. And that is the acme of human life. That is how. That is the goal that we have to achieve. This disposition has to come about before the last breath. If you have achieved this as a human being, you have attained the highest. You have attained Naish Karmya. See? But when the breeze stops, the wave in the ocean also get dissolved in the sea. So this state of cessation of activity is known as perfect state of actionlessness and it is the highest of all perfections. This actionlessness can appear in deep sleep, there is no activity, right? In coma also there is no activity. For whom? For the one who is in coma. <laughs> in samadhi there is no activity. Because mind is absolutely still. Mind is still. In deep sleep the mind is still. But in all these three, coma, deep sleep, samadhi, our knowledge is not complete as regards who we essentially are. We are still extroverted in our approach. Therefore you go into samadhi. And you come out of Samadhi, the world is still there. Why? Because you did not catch, you did, you did not, uh, what do you call it? Give up focusing on the absence. <laughs> That's what I should say. You did not give up focusing on the void, on the absence, emptiness. And what are you looking at? Empty, there was nothing there. Nothing is not an object. Who is aware there? When the mirror is taken away, are you still there? Yes. 
if there is no thought to associate yourself with in the mind are you still there yes be that rather than now oh, what should i watch now there is no thought <laughs> there is no thought is a thought you are still caught up in that wrong uh, uh, approach sit still and if you have read and even heard all this when that moment comes it will take you it will what do you call catapult you into infinite knowledge so when you have the thoughts are coming and going and if you are not attached and they are not bothering you then there is no difference whether you are in the samadhi or whether there are thoughts so absolutely that's how masters live that's that's how masters live you are understanding it i am understanding it but are we living like the masters unaffected by the world so we want to directly abide in that uh, in that knowledge and that knowledge is not separate it is not something to be achieved that is my nature for that only one thing is required what actionlessness action happens where manasa vacha khaya actions take place at the body level at the speech level and the thought level all these need to subside just like they subside in deep sleep <laughs> if leg is moving in the deep sleep here and there you are not aware also okay it you don't even know it is your leg <laughs> because no body identification in deep sleep no thought in deep sleep you are not even aware that you are breathing in deep sleep is dissolved in the sea so this state of cessation of activity is known as the perfect state of actionlessness and it is the highest of all perfections and this one must pursue one must come to that actionlessness in spite of activity taking place remember we talked about karma and kriya karma was identification with activity is called karma for karma there will always be karma phala what was the next stage disassociate from the karma phala slowly slowly as you uh, uh, your your uh, expectations from the results uh, uh, recede slowly you will realize i am not the doer of the action we have not come to this point i am not the doer of the action activity is happening of its own accord i am the witness but still clarity is not there activity is still going on i am still watching the activity <laughs> which is called witnessing or at the outside world it is called observing in the mind it is called witnessing when the onslaught of thoughts in the mind dissolves to a large extent then the witness becomes available to himself right now my eyes are watching you when they are watching you is there a disposition possible that in spite of seeing you all and everything they become available to themselves it is possible do i not know that all these forms that are being illumined can they be illumined without eyesight can they be so where is my attention is my attention on every form that is illumined or is my attention on eyesight on vision where is my attention when my attention is on vision then i will not be affected by what the vision is illuminating you understand when my attention is on the vision i will not be distracted by what forms or colors it is illuminating similarly similarly when i am aware of the witness then i will not be affected by what 
द विटनेस इज विटनेसिंग वॉट इज इट विटनेसिंग थॉट वेन विल द विटनेस बिकम अवेलेबल टू द विटनेस ओनली वेन अ क्रिटिकल अमाउंट ऑफ थॉट हैव सबसाइडेड यू आर गोइंग एट हंड्रेड एंड टेन स्पीड इन द माइंड एंड यू वॉन्ट टू बिकम अवेलेबल and you want to watch oh i'm watching my thoughts and what happens the next moment crisis <laughs> crisis because i can't handle what do you want i want sleeping pills i can't sleep so when consciously systematically in a disciplined manner by disengaging ourselves from the world from activity from the cross activity to the speech activity to then we come to the mind activity as we keep doing this then a certain calmness in the mind comes still activity thoughts are still coming but to a large extent the mind has subsided then then and then alone the mind become the the witness becomes self observing the, what is what is that called self observing automatically spontaneously intuitively the question will come then who am i what is this vision which is illuminating everything not affected by anything what is this mind which is thinking of all thoughts but always remains mind only what is this consciousness what is this i which associates with everything is supporting everything but itself is always the same who is this what is its nature is it the witness or is it pure consciousness when you come to this question come to this juncture in your contemplation scriptures will come into your life teachers will come into your life to propel you deeper into yourself but this question must not come as a result of reading the book it must come spontaneously as a result of your sadhana as a result of your purification as a result of your disentanglement from the gross and subtle from the karma uh, sorry uh, activity at the body level activity at the speech and activity at the mind it has not dissolved completely but to a large extent then this question appears then we are in moksha sanyasa yoga tyage nahi ke amrit tattva manasho only immortality is possible only by giving up you have given up activity at the body level you have given up activity at the speech level you are giving up slowly the activity at the mental level at the mental level the question is coming who am i <laughs> it's only in the mind but now where is the question aham idam till now you were witnessing all this now the last thought in this is who is this fellow <laughs> who am i till now this fellow was observing all this now because their uh, uh, what do you call their movement has become less satsangs have been done attended automatically that it has to think this is mind it is thinking but now suddenly by grace the thought appears who is this fellow who is observing that's me <laughs> story over no more deliberation after that no more thinking after that हा नाइन नाइन एटी फर्स्ट देवड़ा चिया कामा कलसु उपरम गंगे सी सिंधु प्रवेशु का सुवर्ण शुद्धि कसु सोड़ा वैसा तैसे आपुले ने फेडिजे फेडिजे का जाणने ते ही गिणूनी असणे 
ऐसीजे दशा दशा ती ये परते का ही निपजने आन नाही मनाऊनी मणि पे पाही परम सिद्धि ते ऐसेज नाउ ही इज टेकिंग व्हिच वर्ड परमाम परमाम अधिगच्छती he says just as the temple reaches its final stage with the construction of the dome so what is the final stage of the dome kalasha sthapana isn't it every few years they do the kalashas they change the kalasha but when the first time the temple is created it is not complete till the even if the deity is inside it is not complete till the kalasha sthapana the on the top you see those oh, oh, uh, kalasha is called what uh, pots sh- pot shaped uh, uh, sometimes there is one sometimes there is three sometimes there are many kumb they call it kumb or kalasha kalasha sthapana so just as the temple reaches its final stage with this construction of the dome or the flow of the ganges stops when it joins the sea we are coming to the conclusion so ganga ji loses her identity when it reach beats the ocean no more identity there art or the gold is purified after it becomes 24 karat gold can you purify it further no not possible after it becomes 24 karat gold so with the cessation of ignorance knowledge also ceases and the stage is reached when all activity comes to an end when knowledge ceases sorry when ignorance ceases knowledge also ceases meaning here again before he talked about nash karma siddhi you are the self is of the nature of knowledge suddenly you have to understand when he talking about the uh, when the ignorance stops knowledge also stops because opposite of knowledge is ignorance opposite of ignorance is knowledge where in the mind how do you ignorance also appears by way of thoughts knowledge also appears by way of thoughts both of them stop then what then you remain <laughs> you remain you don't stop you are still conscious thinking has stopped mind is always of either micro or macro ignorance or knowledge intelligent or stupid it always works with opposites likes or dislikes comfort or discomfort knowledge or ignorance thought knowledge or ignorance of whatever but that also is known by way of thoughts only bo so when so just like the thought of sleep is pursued i am sleepy i am sleepy i am sleepy how long as long as the thoughts of the waking of the day are disturbing you when there are no thoughts of the day disturbing you do you need to keep saying i am sleepy the thought of the sleep also drops when the last thought of the day finishes the thought of sleep also that's the last thought of the day it also dies then why did we take it to counteract all other thoughts of the day this is amrit anubhav gyaneshwar maharaj he is we are doing this chapter on sunday the words devalued so in the previous chapter he talked about satchid ananda the word satchid ananda sat is used the word sat is used to counteract asat existence word is used to counteract non existence knowledge chit is used to counteract achit achit means no knowledge is equal to ignorance and ananda word is used to counteract to neutralize dukham misery and grief but when grief is uh, neutralized ignorance is neutralized non existence is neutralized 
then you don't have to keep saying i am sachidan and i am such a you are that's it then dakshina murti begins maunam vyakhyat prakatita para brahma para brahma yuvanam maunam vyakha that is eloquent silence that silence in which all possibilities are there they may express or you they may not express but you do not you how should i how should I put it i can't say you cannot forget yourself but you are the substratum of the entire you are the entire because you are the material just like every wave the material that has gone into a wave is water they came from water they existed in water they went back to water the material was water so everything what is everything waking dream deep sleep samadhi all of that came out of the self existed in self goes back to the self and what is self which is unaffected uninfluenced by all these life continues expression of life continues or may not continue it does not matter he says all activity comes to an end when this state is attained nothing remains to be achieved and so it is called the highest perfection paramam gatim paramam gachati paramam uh, what was the word here ah uh, paramam sanyasena adigachati having given up adigachati you move move towards or come to abide what paramam the highest goal the highest perfection but this state of self realization is attained by a lucky one only through the grace of his teacher at this juncture when we are coming to this actionlessness because we are so addicted to thinking we are so addicted to doing even at the mental level at that time it is the words of the teacher in a satsang that suddenly flip you from thoughts to be independent from the thoughts a, a, a recent example is ramakrishna paramahams from bengal he was kali devotee mother kali and he she used to do everything for him and in his mind continuously the picture of the form of kali is there he feels he is one with kali he is the son of kali he is and she is the mother of the whole world and this was his relationship with her and and but he was an explorer ramakrishna pramans was a explorer so he explored buddhism then the buddhist teacher came into his life he explored christianity christian teacher came into his life he explored islam islam teacher came into his life he explored the bhav the feeling what radha must be feeling towards krishna he started becoming like radha what could what would be the devotion of hanuman he started growing a tail all these are recorded facts he was so identified with that character now when he had experimented with everything then he said oh what does it what they talk about vedanta vedanta what does it mean to be uh, no to what does it mean to know the self i am not able to give up the form of kali by myself what does it mean that i am formless the truth is formless Uh, attributeless when he thought like this he doesn't know the teacher the teacher appeared tota puri maharaj he used to live in puri uh, jagannath puri so from there he came he, he said no i have come what this is what you wanted no yes <laughs> come 
and he guided him he was not able to, to go through that he uh, he is not able to give up then he made him pick up i don't know what the exercise was but pick up the sword and cut the head of kali for 3 days and 3 nights ramakrishna paramahans was in samadhi in meditation formless attributeless no body identification just sitting there like a rock but tota puri maharaj was a yogi after having given ramakrishna paramahans because he told do this do that do this he did and it ended when ramakrishna paramahans came out of the samadhi having abided in his self but it was not an it was complete absorption when he came out he looked at everything he continued praying to the goddess kali <laughs> he says what are you doing now you are a vedanti he says no being a vedanti doesn't stop me from praying to kali it doesn't stop me from eating food it doesn't stop me from co- contemplating it doesn't stop me from dancing then totapuri who was a yogi who believed only in strict discipline this that you uh, everything has to be away 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 became his spent 11 months with him he was continuously watching what is this fellow i don't see him i don't see his abidance corrupting even when he is angry i don't see his abidance corrupting even when he is dancing i don't see his abidance corrupting when he is singing with so much devotion towards the goddess what is this this i have not experienced and then the teacher becomes the disciple of ramakrishna paramahansa 11 months he spent with him so it's a rare one to whom we must practice samadhi abhyas samadhi must not be imposed samadhi it must be a result of withdrawal from everything it must lead to samadhi and you can't be in samadhi 24 hours a day so what do you do rest of the day do chanting do naam jap listen to satsang so that our conclusions of ab, ab, about ourselves they get rejuvenated we come to the correct understanding who we are and then maybe next tomorrow morning when you sit in samadhi instead of going to do samadhi you will go into the na- and when you come out of it it will be natural everything will be transformed everything is there husband is there children are there, but you are infinite now this can only be spoken in so many words there is no you can keep speaking speaking there is no end to it because no words can do justification to that abidance and in this way uh, but this state of self realization is attained by a lucky one by a rare one through the grace of the grace of his teacher in fact everything is grace god comes into our life the five god we get born to our to a particular set of parents where whatever the experience we had in that particular family prompted us to where we are today it is grace only the siblings the school the teachers the 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 company that we kept the experiences that we had everything in our life slowly and steadily was continuously pushing us prompting us guiding us towards this knowledge and this is highest knowledge after that there is what nothing how many people do you know who are live going through this world they are also being pushed they are also being guided they are but are they recognizing that they have to reach this goal are they pursuing this goal are they even aware 
that this is what they need to seek are they even aware that they are already that which they are seeking very rare ones you are hearing it but tomorrow again sms will come but swami ji what do i do to be that which i already am <laughs> what do i do to be that which i already am go take a jump <laughs> take a swim <laughs> huh? these are con- this is contemplation you know now from beginning of this class till now it's one hour some uh, one and a half, one hour 15 minutes continuously are uh, every verse of gita every wor- verse words word of gnaneshwar maharaj is bringing us to that point again and again with every example with every line continuing in the 50th verse siddhim prapto yatha brahma siddhim prapto yatha brahma tathapnoti nibodhame tathapnoti nibodhame mama samase naiva kaunteya samase naiva kaunteya nishtha gnanasya ya para nishtha gnanasya ya para together siddhim prapto yatha brahma tathapnoti nibodhame samase naiva kaunteya nishtha gnanasya ya para he says learn from me in brief o arjuna how after winning winning perfection one attains to brahman which is the highest state of wisdom <laughs> winning perfection coming to the self to be the self is perfection within this body coming to recognize that you are not the changing body you are not the changing breath you are not the changing mind you are not this notion or that notion you are the infinite self and you have come to know this without a thought <laughs> i am giving you in one <laughs> short formula you come to know now the next stage is to know that this atman that i am is the infinite brahman meaning this atma is all that there is only coming to the atma nirvikalpa samadhi now what bliss we are experiencing in the samadhi and why we are experiencing the bliss because mind is dissolved now can we experience the same intense same bliss which is our nature in spite of the active mind <laughs> for that something has to change you have to re uh, or what is the word you have to understand the world in a different way in order to not be disturbed by the world the first stage was you removed the world from the mind and you came to know that you are now every time you come out the world is still there is there a way because brahman means atma means with this particular form i have come to the essence what is the essence of the whole creation consciousness infinite consciousness the another word for it is brahman that which is larger than the largest is brahman bhratat brahman see so my god i am the essence of the whole creation yes how now it is next expansion so till now we have not expanded consciousness we have removed all the obstacles within the mind so that we came to the consciousness 
now we are going to recognize this consciousness is all that there is once you come to this form thought free realization that self is alone all that there is then whether you are in meditation or you are in the world it will not matter to you <laughs> isn't it once the wave has realized that it is water it was meditating it attended a satsang yeah 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 i know the moment it open goes out of the satsang oh my god covid oh my god crazy people driving on the road so what happened the other waves are still there so what will be the transformation transformation is that that wave realized it is water and it remains as water even when the mind becomes manifest <laughs> then what will be the realization if we can, if we have to use the words we cannot use the words but to use the words then the realization will be that all the material that has gone into every wave is nothing but the self the infinite waters that i am if i have to use the words it is a direct realization but this happens when we this this step from atma to brahman it happens when we are exposed to the scriptures when we are in a satsang very rare it will happen on your own why because we are so invest so much invested in the world we are so much invested in the i i i i have met, come across masters yogic masters who don't allow you to touch their feet why oh you he touches because they have got these siddhis also they say, oh he is he eats meat and he touches oh he will take away my merits and he will give demerit the demerits will get uh, uh, stuck to me they go around any anywhere they go around in the world they take a cook with them who make food without garlic without ginger without salt without onions as if that is going to stop them from uh, 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 remaining pure these are all jokes but people are stuck in many different ways they carry their own cooks they carry one person i know he carries ganga water all the way to america liters can canisters after canisters he will take bath only in ganga water he will drink only ganga water his food should be cooked only in ganga water and he calls himself a sanyasi yes he has great powers he is very rich is very powerful but stuck in the gross i'm not critical of him that is his way he has taken that commitment all the best to him i'm taking it from sadhana point of view that we must not get stuck anywhere air does not get stuck anywhere water does not get stuck anywhere it finds a way to the ocean air can air does not get stuck anywhere even if you put a, a mesh it will pass through it it will you cannot trap it it will find a way because its nature is to be free same way our nature is to be is that of freedom परिहेचि आत्मसिद्धि जोके कोणी भाग्यनिधि श्री गुरु कृपालब्धि काळी पावे उदयतांची दिन करू दिन करू प्रकाशुची आते आंधारू का दीपसंगे का पुरु दीपुची होय ही सेज व्हेन द सन राइजेस द लाइट एनवलप्स डार्कनेस फ्रॉम ऑल साइड्स when camphor comes into contact with lamp it becomes a lamp 
See how beautiful examples is taken. When the sun rises, light envelops darkness from all sides. It's not it's going as a arrow into the darkness and then blast it open into light. No, it's covering it from all sides. Then the second example, uh, when camphor become, comes in contact with the lamp, it becomes the lamp. When we do karpur arti, we take the karpur, karpur is the camphor. Camphor is never lighted with matchstick or lighter. Camphor is always lighted from the main lamp that is in front of the Lord. So you take the camphor piece, you light it there, you put it, then it bec itself becomes a lamp. And with that you say, Om na tatra suryo bhaatu na tarakam and the prayer goes on. When a, uh, continuing here, Taya lavana chi kanika, Mela takhe wo udaka, Udaka chi ho uni dekha, Thake zevi, Ka nidritu ceva vilia, Swapne si nidavaya, Zauni apanapaya, Mele zaiza, Tai se jaya konha si daive, Guru apke shavana chi sarve, sarve. Save Dwaita Giloni Visave Visamve Hapanaya Vritti Tayasi Maga Karma Karane He Boli Zailitsi Kavane Akasha Yene Zane Ahe Kahi Manauni Tayasi Kahi Trishuddhi Karane Nahi Pari Aise Zari He Kahi Nave Zaya he says, when a granule of salt is dropped in water, it becomes water. It loses its identity. Granule has a shape. It has a, a mass. It has a form. It has a weight. But once it dives into the water to see, this is the example by Ramakrishna Paramahans. The salt doll went to see how deep the water is and became water. And that's what the example is here. Dropped in water, it becomes water. When a person wakes up from sleep, his sleep along with dream ends and he resumes his conscious state. Where is conscious state? Is he, are you conscious as sleeping, while sleeping? No. Oh, but he's breathing. Other people are saying you are conscious. Do you know you are conscious? No. When you are dreaming, are you knowing that you are a dreaming conscious? No, you become conscious only after waking up. So when you have given up the waking and the dream state, oh, sorry, dream and the deep sleep state. When a person wakes up from sleep, his sleep along with dream ends and he resumes his conscious state. So if he hears the instruction of the master through good fortune, his mind sheds the notion of duality and rests in the nature of self. This is what happened to Ramakrishna Paramahansa. that he, the mind gives up duality. And that is only possible by the Aptavachan, by the words of the Guru Maharaj or the teacher. And here we are listening to Nyaneshwar Maharaj, his words, his experience, his abidance. We are not reading a commentary of a person who is a philosopher, professor in some college, <laughs> who is uncooked. We are reading the commentary of a person who is abiding in this knowledge which he is propounding. So he knows all the nitty and nitty gritty of it. He knows all the obstacles. He knows all the uh, crossroads. He knows all the difficulties that are going to come and therefore the commentary, therefore the commentary. Shankaracharya gave a commentary on Bhagavad Gita in Sanskrit. In those times in the 18th century, 8th century, Sanskrit was Gita and etc. 
it was read and studied only by the shastris and the pandits and the brahmins so they understand sanskrit so he wrote the commentary in sanskrit because sanskrit is the most uh, capable language to express ideas but 1300 years ago in 7th century you know 700 60 70 years ago when nyaneshwar maharaj was born he was a product of that time the lord alone appeared in that manner the supreme consciousness alone appeared there must be enough people who must be wanting some guidance there is never a time in the on the on the on the planet especially in india when people have been left uh, or have been left orphan there is always someone to guide you see the masters even today which other country you can can claim that they have realized masters the way they keep popping up in india which other country there is no other country so nyaneshwar maharaj when he came 700 plus years after 750 plus years ago at that time he wanted to make take this knowledge of the uh, uh, from the clutches of the brahmins and the educated class who were who had become corrupt as a result of being the authority to uh, Uh, study it and communicate it because that corruption of their mind of their understanding of the scriptures presented itself in their judgment towards these four brothers and sisters so when all that was over he took bhagavad on when his elder brother told now you speak on bhagavad gita he could have spoken in sanskrit but he spoke in the local language and and he made sure that all the class of people educated uneducated farmers cobblers uh, uh, the shudras everyone was allowed to attend and listen to the satsang no discrimination then from that after listening to nyaneshwar maharaj's commentary from that time onwards this varkari panth has started and varkari panth is every year during july uh, august there is a you from all parts of maharashtra karnataka and uh, andhra pradesh and gujarat people sing the name of the lord and they start walking towards pandharpur and they sleep together they eat together they dance together all the huh, 2 3 500 kilometers they walk to reach pandharpur we went to pandharpur but the beauty of the varkari sampradaya is there is no discrimination every person is equal so an elder you will find an elderly person touching the feet of a young boy the young boy touching the feet of the elder person that is natural but elder also touching an educated touching the feet of a, a, a uneducated so in their own home they may be brahmin kshatriya vaishya shudra but when they come into the those who are varkaris they have gone beyond the division of a humanity no profession is not a barrier education is not a barrier caste is not a barrier wealth is not a barrier no barriers everyone is equal in the eyes of the lord this is what nyaneshwar maharaj propagated a 12 year old boy is giving this commentary we will will think about contemplate on it in our next class with that bolo gnaneshwar maharaj ki jai 
ओम पूर्णमदा पूर्णमिद पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओं शाति शाति हरि ओ श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओ जस्ट इट क्वाइटली फॉर फ्यू मोमेंट्स